Ladies and gentlemen, the great Cody Lee. Father, tell me we get what we deserve. Oh, we get what we deserve. And we're down, we go. Oh. We all, all go down, yeah, before the fall, Ooh, my, do you dare to look and right in the eyes, yeah, of course they will run you down, down to the dark, yes, and they will run you down, down to your fall. How you guys doing?
do you do you think about me and do you do you feel the same way Listen to me, baby. I'm not trying to ruin your happiness. My darling, don't you know that I'm the only one for you? Yeah, I'm not trying to ruin your happiness, baby. And darling, don't you know that I'm the only one You think about me at all? And do you do you feel the same way? Oh, tell me, babe. And do ya? Do you remember how it felt? Cause I. So listen to me now. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not trying to ruin your happiness. And darling, don't you know that I'm the only one for you? Yeah, I'm not trying to ruin your happiness, baby. And darling, don't you know that I'm the only one? Counting dollars, we'll be counting stars. Yeah, we'll be counting stars. Shine, so get out, he shall find old, but not that old young. 
but not that bold. I don't think the world is sold, just only what we're told. I feel something so right, doing the wrong thing. And I feel something so wrong, doing the right thing. I could lie, could lie, could lie. Everything that kills me makes me feel like lay, lay. Sleep, hey. Dreaming about the things that we could be But baby, I've been, I've been praying hard hey. Send no more counting dollars, we'll be counting stars Feel it burn down this river every turn. Hope is off, I let our word make that money. Watch it burn old, but not that old. Young, but not that bold. I don't think the world is sold, just doing what we're told. I feel something so wrong, doing the right thing. I could lie, could lie, could lie. Everything that downs me. Makes me want to fly. Lay, lay, I've been, I've been losing sleep. What? Dreaming about the things that we could be. But baby, I've been, I've been praying hard. Whoa. Said no more counting dollars, we'll be counting stars. Lay, lay, I've been, I've been losing sleep. Hey. Dreaming about the things that we could be. But baby, Watch it burn, sink in the root of the lessons I learned. Take that money, watch it burn, sink in the root of the lessons I learned. Take that money, watch it burn, sink in the root of the lessons I learned. Take that money, watch it burn, sink in the root of the lessons I learned. Everything that kills me makes me feel like lay, lay, I've been, I've been losing sleep, hey. dreaming about the things that we could be. We'll be the stars Lay, lay, I've been, I've been losing sleep hey. Dreaming about the things that we could be But baby, I've been, I've been praying hard hey. Send no more counting dollars We'll be, we'll be counting Take that money, watch it burn Sink in with the lessons I learned Take that money, watch it burn Sink in with the lessons I learned Take that money, watch it burn Sink in with the lessons I learned Take that money, watch it burn, sink in the river, the lessons I learned. Are you kidding me right now? Come on, put your hands together. Come on, Cody Lee and Sal, the musical genius. Amazing. Dave, we'll be back. Have a seat real quick. Have a seat. Guys. Ooh. Awesome. <laughs> Cody, are you having fun? Heck yeah. <laughs> Cody, before we get started, can you, can you do an impersonation of, uh, of some of the people? Do Howie. Be Howie. I'd like. Heck yeah. <laughs> what did Simon sound like on the show? Simon. This was your moment. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all day, every day with this young man. He is such an inspiration. Uh, you are such an incredible mom. We've watched you for the last 24 hours, and our team keeps shaking their head going, she keeps pushing this young man. Uh, you seem to have the answer yes to every opportunity, whether he's done it before or not. And I want to I wanna hear a little bit of your story of how you got to this moment. Tell us a little bit of just before America's Got Talent came on the scene, uh, just about your journey as a mom. Well, <laughs> that was a tough journey. Um, 
just how finding out that he was blind. Um, so Cody was three months old, and before that, you know, you would, I would take him in the sunlight, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't squ you know, like squint. So I was in denial, and the doctor had mentioned, have you taken him to the eye doctor yet? And I said, no. She said, you need to take him. And I said, okay. So I waited a little bit and went back to the doctor, and she said, did you go to the eye doctor? And I said, no. And so she said, you need to go. So I went, and I was in denial, so I went, and he was three months at the time. And that was the day that the doctor said, that your son has optic nerve hypoplasia. And I was like, I don't understand what that is. And he, so he kind of went around and around about optic nerve hypoplasia. His midline, you know, his, his brain isn't fully developed. His midline, you know, his corpus callosum isn't fully developed. Um, you know, and he just kept going around and around. And I'm like, what are you trying to say? And he said, well, his optic nerves aren't fully developed. You have a half the size of an optic nerve, and you have a quarter size of an optic nerve. And I'm like, I don't understand. What does that mean? And he's like, well, you know, there's like certain, I go, is my son blind? And he said, yeah. He said, I'm really sorry, but your son is blind. And that was the day that I got on my knees. I fell to the ground and I got on my knees and I said, okay, God, I completely give up and I'm gonna put everything in your hands because I don't know what to do. <laughs> so he carried me and even to this day, sometimes I don't even know how I got through a lot of it. But I know that he carried me through the hardest times. So when I found out and when I, the thing that I do know that happened was I accepted. And I think that is the thing that I did quickly, that I didn't realize that I did quickly, because I know a lot of parents struggle with accepting. And when you accept, you can move forward, and you can work on helping your child. So I got the confidence, and I was like, okay, I know I'm going to help him. He's just blind. He can have a life like everybody else. It's not the end of the world. So we're going to do this, Cody. So, right? <laughs> hey, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> I had a really wise friend who was also blind. He was actually Cody's O&M instructor. And he said... Do not baby him. And I am thankful that he was in my life because it, that made sense to me. <laughs> so I did. I started to be tough on him. I would teach him where things were as he grew, and I would teach him, you know, right here is the little bump. Right here there's a little pothole in the house if there's little, you know, a, you know different levels. And if you scoot too far, you, the TV's here, the chair's here. So he would be like a kid and he would scoot and he'd bump his head and I'd say, and he'd start to cry and I'd say, Cody, you knew it was there. You knew it was there so, you know, I didn't make a big deal out of it. So he would stop and I didn't baby him. So I pushed him to do stuff so it became clear to me that I needed to, to help him with life skills. So I decided, okay, you know, so we went out and we would go to the sand and we would make him, you know, he was very tactile. He didn't want to touch things. He would tantrum 30 times a day and we would do it over and over and over. And <laughs> so it was working. Things were good. He was getting all the services he needed. 
And then at four years of age, now a blind child has the same tendencies as an autistic child when they're babies. They do repetitive movements, they are echolalic, and they you know, have communication issues when they're children. So he was at the Blind Children's Learning Center when he was little, and as he got bigger, the other kids that were blind with Cody started to socialize at the age of three, four. They started to stop, you know, learn to stop perseverating because they were taught not to do those things. Well, Cody did not stop. He continued to do those things, and I couldn't understand why. So we went back to the doctors, and the doctor had mentioned, well, I think your son is autistic. So, so it was at four years. Four years. And that was, it felt like a hitter, uh, uh, like a harder hit, because here I am, you know, strong now, thinking, you know, I got this, I can do this, we're going to be okay, and then I get hit with that. So yeah, I got a little angry, I got a little angry at God, and I was like, why, why, you know? I just got over that, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Why is it so hard, why, now he doesn't, now I don't know what, he's gonna have a life? Is he gonna, is he gonna be able to get married? Is he gonna be able to have kids? Is he gonna be able to do all those things? So. Tell us about when you were at Disney and how the Lord just used that moment to like, right after that, such a pivotal moment in both of your lives. That was the awakening moment. So I had that, you know, that I had lost hope. And I went back, you know, down and because I didn't know what to do now. I didn't understand autism. So I knew that he loved music. And I tried really hard to uh, get him to perform for the family. And he, he wouldn't. So I thought, okay, he's just going to play music in his room. So I thought, all right, I'm gonna have to figure this out. How do I help him? How do I help his autism? But one day, we went to Disneyland, six years old. He's sitting in the wheelchair because he wasn't good with being around the crowd, you know, with the autism because of the you know, overstimulation. So a four guy, four men a cappella group comes out and they start singing a cappella. So Cody's like drumming, his hands and his feet are all going in his wheelchair. <laughs> And, uh, and the leader of the band at the end, he goes, he goes, you got to go beat. And, Co and Cody goes, yeah. And I go, yeah, he <laughs> sings too. And the guy goes, you sing? And, he, go, he, and I go, he goes, what's he sing? I go, he sings shout. And he goes, you want to sing? And Cody goes, yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, I'm going to let him sing. So he gets up and he's like, they go one, two, three. And he starts singing shout. So the guys all like, whoa. So they all start singing a cappella with Cody, and Cody's eyes just go huge. And he's like, you could see that, you could see just that pure joy and happiness. And he's just like, oh, this is awesome. And he's singing, and they're singing, and people are clapping, and people are coming closer and closer. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden, the guy, he has necklaces on. And you know, tactile meaning for an autistic child, they don't like necklaces, they don't like watches, you know, they don't like to be touched. So he takes off his necklaces and it's like, I'm like, no, 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 no. And because I, I see him going for Cody and he's going to put him in, it's too late. He puts him on Cody. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. And I'm just waiting for a tantrum. And Cody grabs these necklaces. As he's singing, he's singing. He never stopped a beat, he's going still. And he drops these necklaces, and he keeps clapping, and he keeps singing. <laughs> that was the moment. That was the awakening. And I saw, oh, my God, that's it. That was my answer. I knew now how to help him through music because he's a born entertainer. And that was the day that I rejoiced because I was like, it's amazing because in the last two days, everybody, we have just watched her push him. 
they call it, we're gonna torture one another. <laughs> You know, but uh, just watch this video. This, this is, like, let's show the first, we went to uh, Snowflex, and this was, Tina was like, we're going all the way to the top. And I was like, are you sure? Has he ever done this? And she was like, he's never done this, but we're doing this today. <laughs> let's watch this. It's crazy. <laughs> Heck yeah! Heck yeah! <laughs> Cody, was that fun when you went on the tube? Heck yeah! <laughs> that was fun! <laughs> and then after that, tell them what we did. We went and, um, and got on a horse. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Can you do a horse impersonation? I like... <laughs> Watch this. This is the first time he ever got on a horse yesterday. <laughs> Can nobody tell me nothing? Can you tell me nothing? Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. Yeah. Woo! Woo First time on a horse, won't be the last. <laughs> what did you think about the horse? It was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> when we were leaving the equestrian center, he saw, uh, I mean, we saw a tractor, and he'd never been on a tractor, and so <laughs> Cody got on a tractor. Watch this. Tina, you gotta tell me why. Why do you keep pushing him? Why do you believe in him? Uh, what advice would you give those of us who are always timid and afraid to let someone soar, let someone really meet their potential and then excel? Give us some things. You're such an example as, as a mom and a son in, in just being able to not just get on America's Got Talent, not just attain the golden ticket, but then like the buzzer, but then like to win. And, and that's just the beginning, I think, of what God wants to do in and through you. What advice would you give us about not holding back? Well, because he, just because he's blind and autistic doesn't mean he shouldn't have a normal life like everybody. So, so I'm a huge believer, you know, that because he cannot, you know, just because he can't see it, I want to go show him. I want to show him the world. I want to show him everything because he doesn't really understand what it is unless he's in it and he's doing it and he's feeling it. That's what makes him understand it and, and learn about it. So I want him to experience everything. And I, I don't want, I mean, safety first. Don't get me wrong. Safety first. Tina said safety first 19 <laughs> times yesterday. <laughs> So we'd go, we're going to get on a horse. And she's like, yes, we are. Where's the helmet? You know, and it was interesting to watch you. You wanted to be responsible, but yet you wanted to be adventuresome. Well, because, of course, I want to protect him. He's my baby. But at the same time, I want him to be able to do what everybody else is doing and to be able to decide if he likes it or not. Because that's the thing, you know, with, being, with autistic kids and stuff, they, a lot of times they don't really know what it is because their sensors are just going haywire and they don't like it and they think they won't like it, so the parents won't try other things because they think, oh my gosh, they're tantruming, we won't do it. But if you can get through that and you can get past, you know, the tantrum and you can get them to actually do it and see it or taste it or touch it, they may just love it, like Cody. So there were so many, like five, he would eat only five foods 
Well, we had to do therapy, and we started, you know, we, even if it was one little tiny piece of lettuce on his lip, you know, we'd have to, like, count, okay, it, you, t- you had it on your lip for five seconds, woo, and he'd be like, woo, <laughs> and we had to do this over and over till he tasted it, and he was like, do you want more or no more? Want more, and it was like, boom, there it is, you know, keep going, keep doing it, you have to keep, so for the parents, you can't give up because you're gonna hit so many walls and your child's gonna tantrum and they're, and they're not gonna want it and you're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, I should stop. And I understand that feeling because you feel like you're hurting them when they're crying and they're not. They just are going haywire and because they don't understand it. And the minute you can get them to understand it, they're gonna love it and most of the time they will. I mean, there's been only maybe one or two foods that Cody has now told me no to, which is like, Pinto beans. <laughs> I'm like, what more or no more? No more. Do you like pinto beans, Cody? Heck yeah. <laughs> you want to go eat pinto beans? Like, no. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> you are funny. Hey, listen, so we, I know we, we cannot leave here without more music from the great Cody Lee. All right, so. Our last 10, 15 minutes here. Listen to me. Um, we, we asked Cody, and this is such a talent. Uh, we asked Cody this morning if he would help us with something. And so, Sal, if you'll come and, and get the, you know, just prepared for this moment. I, I want to just speak to you, just, uh, uh, just have a family conversation for just a second while they're getting ready to tell you that um, a lot of us woke up uh, yesterday with the heartbreaking news that the McKeon family, Toby and Amanda and their, their children, um, we're mourning the loss of Truett, uh, you know, and so uh, Truett, as a 21-year-old, passed away this week, and um, it's so heartbreaking. You know, parents um, should not go to their children's funerals. Their children should go to them, and for their funeral, they should um, see their children outlive them, and there's nothing more heartbreaking than when a mom has to get ready for a memorial service this week, and so we, we heard about that news, and we began to pray, and um, and, and as I was talking to Toby, or just texting Toby yesterday, um, it dawned on me that one of the songs, the last time he was here uh, at Convocation, that he um, had allowed me and Kevin to listen to on the back deck of my house at lunch was a song that his son, as an artist, was beginning to develop and work. And so literally this morning, just in honor and in memory of Truett, uh, I asked Sal if he would uh, let Cody and him listen to it just for a few minutes. And... I kid you not, um, they listened to it in about two minutes. In about two minutes, they began to just compose something. And so they're going to use it as an introduction uh, of, uh, of a bigger song that really is the hope in a moment like this. And so if Amanda, if Toby, if you're watching, your Liberty family is with you. We're praying for you. We mourn with you. But here's the good news. In all of this tragedy, uh, we know that this is not an ultimate goodbye, that we know the true it belongs to the Lord and, and that he's ultimately healed and he's in heaven. And for us, heaven is an imagination of a preferred day. It's a vision of where we end up. But for him, it is right now a present reality. And so I want to show you this video. This was um, Truett's first and last concert as a solo artist. It was last week uh, in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Here's just a little snap of uh, uh, when he was there so that you can see the song in its essence. And then right after that, uh, Cody and Sal are going to together begin our time of just remembering them and really more than anything else, knowing that the gospel gives us hope in dark hours. And so let's watch this together.
So she left and she said that no matter what, we got lost in your head and we got eyes, 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 eyes. We can make your eyes. So she left and she said, man, no matter why, you get lost in your head and you make your eyes, 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 eyes. We can make your eyes. So she, maybe you know I should go and this and that. Maybe that's the reason we won't call me back. I know that's the lesson last time I relaxed. You drink every time to the real and that's the fact. Maybe you should want to go and this and that. Maybe that's the reason you won't call me back. I know I said that's the last time I relapsed. Most. We just need some time for healing, that's a fact. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I would do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by a glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine Surrounded by a glory What will my heart feel Will I dance before you Jesus To my knees will I fall, will I say hallelujah, will I be able to stink it all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. Sure.
I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Remain standing if you would. Remain standing if you would. Um, Toby and Amanda. Um, brothers and sisters who are today getting ready for just a really, really tough season. Just know that we put our hands towards Nashville and we're praying for you. Toby, you're not just a Liberty alum. You're, you're a great servant of God. You're an evangelist. God has used you to minister to so many people throughout the years. Who knew that when you were a student in one of these dorms that God would raise you up to be such a strong, loud voice. We've watched God use you to bring so many people home to in tough hours give so many people hope. And so in this hour, brother, for all the people that you've ministered to, all right, it's your turn to let us minister to you. And so I just wanna ask the 12,000 people in this room, if you've been ministered to in your past by that family, by, and it's not just Toby singing and entertaining and ministering, it's what Amanda and the family did by sacrificing to let them be out on the road. If you've been ministered to by that precious family. Will you just lift your hand as a testimony that God has used Toby in a great way in our lives. And so Toby, it's our turn now to pray for you, brother. Lord, we pray that although sorrow is deep, that God, through that, the worship will go deeper. God, we can't imagine what it would be like to lose a child, but we can imagine that despite that, in the midst of that, that you have not left that family. And so we pray that you hold them dear and near. We pray for stamina in the next few weeks. And we pray for strength. And God, I pray that they would not waste this moment, that it would deepen their faith. And I pray that, God, siblings won't get bitter, but they'll get better at their faith. I pray, Father, for all those who are in this moment waking up to the reality that life is fragile. It is a vapor here. And I pray that God, um, even in this hour, that through tragedy, you would create testimony. That in the next few weeks, we'd hear about those who've come to Christ because Truett's death made them come face to face with the question of eternity. Made them come face to face with the, the reality of heaven. And so we pray for our brother and we pray for the ministry that will come through this. Just lift them up. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sal. Keep standing if you would. Keep standing. Sal, you literally put this together last second just to honor Toby, and I'm so thankful for you. I've watched you just not as just the vocal leader, but just as a big brother, a brother's keeper, uh, just walk into Cody's life. Even this morning, watching the way that you just put everything like this together, what is one thing that you've learned uh, because we're going to walk out of here with a fun song, all right? But what is one thing that you've learned just being around this great fr friend of yours? Well, uh, thank you for having us here, by the way. I appreciate it. Um, so I, I've, I've known Cody for about seven years, and I never, I never intended on being uh, a music teacher when I was trying to be a rock and roll guy touring the world. <laughs> Um, sort of fell into it, thankfully. And, um, you know, Tina and Cody walked in one day, and I was asked if I'd be willing to take on a student like him. And uh, I was, surprisingly to myself, completely open-armed and, and wanting to do that. And it changed my life. So in one simple word... The one thing Cody taught me, listen. Yeah. So don't, don't talk a lot. Just, just listen to the people around you. Listen to 
who they are. And it doesn't have to be words. Listen to, listen to what they're feeling. And if you really, truly are silent, you will hear what they're trying to tell you. And that's what I've learned through Cody. So. And I've seen you just live that out, just even in the last few days, just listening and patiently understanding and seeking. Your curiosity is what makes you not just a great musician, honestly, but just a big brother. And so can we thank Sal as well, just for the investment. Today's better because of you, buddy. All right. Thank you. All right. So we've got one more song. Are you guys ready to go for it full throttle? Are we ready? All right. One more song. It's going to be a big one. You guys ready? Let's give it a five, four, three, two, one. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. All right, everybody stay on your feet. I need everybody to say, woo! woo! Cody, was that good enough? Yeah. Are you sure? Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, well, was it good enough for me? Let's say, woo! Woo! All right. We didn't bring the band this time. Cody has a full band. We didn't bring it, so we're going to... We're gonna recruit all you 12,000 people to be part of the band right now. So I need everybody to put their hands together or stomp to this beat. Woo. You ready, Cody? Yeah. One, two, one, two, three, four. Cold Michelle fight for that white gold. This one for them hood girls, then good girls. Yeah, Straight yeah. masterpieces. Silent, wildin', living it up in the city. Cut truck song with Sailor Rome. Gotta kiss myself, I'm so pretty. I'm too hot. Big journalist in the fire, man, I'm too hot. Make a dragon wanna retire, man, I'm too hot. Sit on you, you know who I am, I'm too hot. Break it down. Girl, sit to hallelujah. Girl, sit to hallelujah. Girl, sit to hallelujah. Cause our town funk don't give it to you. Cause our town funk don't give it to you. Cause our town funk don't give it to you. Standing it out of way in the spot. Don't believe it, just watch. Come on. Wait a minute, fill my cup, pour some linen in it, take a sip, sign a check. Holy yo, get the stretch. Roger Harlem, Hollywood, Jackson, Mississippi. If we show up, we're gonna show out. Smoother than a fresh jar skip it. I'm too hot. We call the police and the fire, man. I'm too hot. Make a dragon wanna retire, man. I'm too hot. Hey, Sam, I you know who I am. I'm too hot. Girls hit you, hallelujah. Girls hit you, hallelujah. Girls hit you, hallelujah. Cause our town funk don't give it to you. Cause our town funk don't give it to you. Cause our town funk don't give it to you. Shut it in and we in the spot. Don't believe me, just watch. Come on. Don't believe me, just watch. Before we leave, let me tell you a little something. Uptown, funk you up. Uptown, funk you up. Uptown, funk you up. Uptown, funk you up. Uh, I said, Uptown, funk you up. Uptown, funk you up. Uh, uptown.
Uptown, funk you up. Uptown, funk you up. Come on, dance, jump on it. If you sick, sad, and thorny. If you freak, get and on it. Don't brag about it, don't show me. Come on, dance, jump on it. If you sick, sad, and thorny. Well, they said it all the way in the spot. Don't believe me, just watch. Come on. your butter knives. Come on. Spread the love. Cody Lee, Sal, come on. They want to take one picture with us. Remain standing. Cody Lee's going to sit right there in the middle. Sal's going to sit right here. Tina asked for this. She's a mom. You know, moms do what moms do. All right. Y'all stand still. All right. Here, hold this, Esther. You guys ready? Everybody smile. Three, two, one, smile. One more time, come on, give it up for the one, the only, Cody Lee. And of course, my friend, David is in the house, David Wilkins, greatest convo ever. Love you. You're dismissed, go to class, amazing.